Today, I'm going to show you how to create this really cool parallax scroll animation in Webflow, where multiple layers of an image move at a different speed to create this visual illusion of depth and three dimensions. The first step to build this scroll animation is you have to find an image which has these different layers, like this image right here that I chose. So as you can see, it has obvious layers like this background layer, then the island layer, and then the two hill layers in the front. And if your image cannot be separated into multiple layers this easily, you're going to have a hard time to build this scroll animation. The selection of the right image is 50% of the work. Once you have a great image that can be split up into multiple layers, you have to do that. I personally used Photoshop for that. You can also use uh, a different photo editing tool, whatever tool you use. You have to find a way to split this image into multiple layers like I did right here. And once you've done that, you have to export all of the different layers, each as an individual image with a transparent background. That is really important. So I turned this original image into four different images, each containing one single layer. Okay, inside Webflow, first of all, uh, right here, I have a almost empty Webflow project, only the main wrapper. And inside of this main wrapper, I will put all of my content. I start by pressing Control E to add a diff block to the page. And this diff block receives the class of section underscore parallax. And inside of this parallax section, I'm going to add another div block to the page. And this one receives the class of parallax underscore component. This is the element inside of which I'm going to create the entire animation. Next, I open my assets panel and I drag all of my four layers, my four images onto the page. So I start with this background layer and drag it onto the page inside of the parallax component. Then I open the assets panel again, take the second layer from behind, drag it into here as well. The same for the third image, which is this hill layer. And also the last image, which is this front layer. I also drag this inside of the parallax component. Next, I select all of the different images and give each image the same class and that is parallax underscore layer. So that's the class each of these images will receive. Second images image as well. And the third one, the last one will receive it as well. And then I go to the size of this parallax layer and set the width to 100% so that all images stretch across the entire website. And now we have all of the four images stacked below each other. However, we need these images to, stack, to be stacked directly on top of each other so that we can create this parallax animation. To do that, we can just set the parent element to position relative. And that in turn allows us to set the child elements, the parallax layers to position absolute and align them to the top with this icon right here. And now, as you can see, I can no longer scroll down all the way because now all of the images are stacked directly on top of each other. Next, I want to give all of these different layers a combo class so I can later tell the difference between them and also style them individually if I want to. The first layer receives the combo class of is, is BG. The second image receives the combo class of is two. The third one is three. And the last one is four. And now there's only one final preparation left that we have to make before we can jump into building the actual animation. We have to go to the background layer and remove the absolute positioning again, only from the background layer. So right here, this is the background layer with, with the isBG combo class. And I set the position from absolute to static, which is the default. The reason I do that has something to do with position absolute and how it works. See, if you set an element to position absolute, then the height of that element no longer affects the height of the parent element. And if you have all of your child elements set to position absolute, like we had a few moments ago, 
then suddenly the parent element, the parallax component, has a height of zero, which is not good and causes issues with the animation. But if we set one element, the background layer, back to position static, then the parent element, the parallax component, automatically adjusts its height to perfectly match the height of this static background layer. That's all we have to do for the preparation. Now we can jump into building the actual animation. To do that, I select the parallax component, go to the interactions panel and set an element trigger. This element trigger will be the while scrolling in view because that's when we want to play the animation. And the action is obviously to play a scroll animation. The animation boundaries, I want them to be at 0% when the element is fully visible. That's when we want to start the parallax animation and we want to end it when the element is fully invisible. And then we can click this plus icon and add a new animation. And that takes us inside of the animation editor. First of all, let's give this a nice and descriptive name. I call this parallax, parallax scroll animation. Perfect. And now we can start to build it. Let's take a quick look at the final version of the project to see what we actually have to animate now. As you can see, this parallax effect relies on the fact that all of the different layers each move at a different speed. And to be precise, the background layers like this ocean and the island with the tower right here move at a slower speed than the, than the front layers. And this makes perfect sense from a physics standpoint. For example, if you drive with a car and look out of the window, then objects that are really close to you, they move really fast. But objects that are really far away from you, like mountains or something like that, they move really slowly when you change your perspective. And the same holds true for this parallax animation. So we have to find, the way, find a way to make the background layers move slower than the front layers. And the best way to do that is to animate the background layers downwards while everything else is scrolling up. And this way we can slow them down. You can think of this like an escalator. If you are on an escalator and the, the escalator is going up, but you are moving down, it will take you longer to get to the next floor as if you were to just stand still and wait until the, until the escalator has moved or scrolled to the top. And we use the same principle here for this animation. So let's actually do it. Um, I select the background layer and add a new uh, action. And that is a transform action, move. At 0% of the animation, I want this background layer to be at its normal position. So I set its Y coordinate to zero rem. And at 100%, I want this background layer to be at the vertical position or the vertical coordinate of 44 rem. So over the course of the animation, this background layer will move downwards. And when the animation ends, it will be 44 rem lower than where it normally would be. And that's why it is slowed down. Let's click on save and uh, actually preview this. And as you can see, if I scroll down the page, the background layer moves much slower than the other layers. So let's keep going and also do that for the island layer and all of the other layers. So let's go back to our animation right here. I select the second layer and also add a move transform. At 0% at the beginning of the animation, the layer should be at its normal position. So I type in zero rem for the Y coordinate and then I duplicate this and move it down to 100%. And at 100%, I want this island layer to be 40 rem lower than it where it would normally be. So over the course of the animation, the island layer will move downwards so that when the animation ends, it is 40 rem lower than where it would normally be. And the reason why I don't use the same value, remember for the background layer, I used 44 rem, is that the island layer is the second layer from behind. 
So if you look at this from a three-dimensional perspective, it is a little bit closer to us than the ocean layer, which means it has to move a little bit faster. And so this downwards animation, which counteracts the scroll speed, has to be a little bit less intense. So that's why I choose uh, 40 rem in this case. And by the way, these values, they change depending on the image that you want to animate. So you just have to play around with this a little bit until you find values where it looks really good. So I click on save and let's preview this again. And now you can see that both the background layers are moving at a slower speed, but the island layer is moving a little bit faster than the ocean, as you can see. Okay, now before we do this for the other two layers as well, you can see uh, when the animation ends, there's this weird overlap down here. And the reason for that is simply because there's no other section uh, below our parallax section. So I'm quickly going to add a placeholder section here and give it the class of section underscore placeholder. This is going to be a completely empty section uh, and it gets a height of let's say 100 view height and um, a background color of white and a position relative so that it overlaps the first layer. And now if we scroll down the page, you can see this behaves as expected. Okay, let's take care of the two front layers. I select my parallax uh, component again, go to the animation, and then I select my third layer. I add a move action to the animation. At 0%, again, it should be at its normal position. And then I duplicate this and over the course of the animation, the third layer should move downwards by let's say 28 rem. So even less than the second layer because it is closer to us. And then we can do the same thing with the last layer. Uh, I also add a move transform to the last layer and at 0%, it should be at its normal position, duplicate it move it to 100% and at 100% it should be at, I don't know, let's say six rem. So remember this last layer is the layer that is the closest to us and thus this downwards animation, which slows the layer down, will be the least intense. So let's preview this again. And now we have this really cool parallax scroll animation. Now in the final version of this, as you can see, I also included a, um, uh, a text right here. If you want to see how I did this, it's basically the same technique, the same principle. I will put a link to the clonable of this project in the video description so you can copy this into your own Webflow account and play around with this on your own. And if you want to learn how to build another really cool scroll animation, you can click on this video right here where I show you how to build the so-called stacking card effect. I can definitely recommend this to you as well. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Mike. Have a nice day. Bye.